Well, hey, check it out, man. We got the brand new uh, DHP uh, Choppers t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. Four man Choppers, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a three-bar rim. We celebrating three years. You know what I'm saying? Chopping it up right here on Dine East Podcast. That's what's up. A lot up. of y'all be asking, man, hey, man, how can I support you? And I say, hey, man, just watch the show. And they say, man, how can I really support you? Hey, man, get a t-shirt right now. DineEastonWorld.com. You know what I'm saying? Black, smoke, gray, white. We got the hats, you know what I'm saying? All that. What's going down, man? It's your boy Donnie Houston tapping in. I want to tell y'all about Miss Mary's Really Though Pie, man. If you know about Really Though, you know that's a Mr. 3 2 saying. So it's only right that his mom, Miss Mary, take that name and uh, start this new pie business that she got going on, man. I want to tell you about these pies, man. Listen, you can't find these pies anywhere in the store. This is a one of a kind recipe. This is gold. This goes all the way back to the family in Louisiana. The dough, listen, you've never had anything this amazing. Trust me, this is the most amazing pie you will ever have in your life. She got so many flavors to choose from. My personal favorite is the apple pie. But listen, sweet potato pies, cherry pies, you know, peach pies, man. Any kind of pie you want, man. Miss Mary got it. And it's the truth. Really, though. So listen, man. Call that number on the screen right now and get you a Miss Mary's Really Dope Pie. Tell a Donnie Houston sent you. Hey, man, it's going down. These pies are amazing. Really Dope. Subscribe to the Donnie Houston Podcast, man. You mentioned T. Ferris. Can you talk a little bit about T. Ferris? I mean, he's one of them people who's still out here. You know, Bro, I met T. Ferris. I was 17, man. We were both were working for the Swisher House doing promotions. See, I'm passing out flyers. He passing out flyers. We, I'm dropping, I'm dropping tapes and CDs to the stores on behalf of Ron C. He driving them on behalf of G Dash hmm. or or Watts. Or we both in the rotation. Next thing you know, we we started working at the Swisher House, doing like a lot of the office work, other stuff. And shit, like I say, I'm. I want to rap. I'm trying to. This before I'm rapping in the Switch House. I want to. I, yeah, I love to rap in the Switch House, but I didn't think it was possible. Shit. And I knew. I knew. I, you can see the line to get in the front door of the Switch House to be a rapper was around the building. <laughs> shit. Wrapped around a couple times. So if I want to get in that line, I'm going to have to wait in line every now and then. Somebody going to come skip you because they know somebody, so they get brought in it. So it's like, shit, it ain't. But the line to work for the Switch House. Passing out flyers, it wasn't no line. Hmm. Shit, I just wanted to be shit down. Shit, I just want to be in the Switch House. I, man, I love Switch House. So shit, to be able to work for and already knowing, I already knew Ron C through his cousin B Sykes, and I went to church with Ron C's family. But still, even though I you like you know somebody, but still I wasn't Switch House. I just knew them. So shit, he know plenty of people that mm. ain't down with him. Shit, I'm trying to be one of your artists. Shit, I'm trying to rap on them tapes, man. Shit, so you know, uh, just meeting T. Ferris at that young early age when we doing like office work, shit like that. That's when we really started bonding because I could see his. We were fans of the same stuff. We love DEA. We love Lil Kiki. We were huge Switch House fans from the north side. He was from Homestead. I was from Acres Home. And it was just something we loved. But we were screwheads. Hmm. So screwheads from the north side was rare. Shit. So that, we, you know, we bonded over that and just our love or all of that. Like shit, like I said, DEA, everything. Big Pokey, everybody. So shit. We had, you know, a lot in common like that. You know, our favorite freestyles. Our, Kiki was both our favorite. You know, shit like that. So I always just respected his opinion musically. But he just worked there just like me. But the only thing was, it was only four people working there. It was Watch, G Dash, Mike Clark, who at that time wasn't even working with us in Houston. He just was in East Texas out there doing his thing. It was just Mike, uh, Michael Watts, uh, uh, G Dash, OG Ron C. But Ron C had his own like operation going on with everything. So shit. Then it was me and T. Ferris, hmm. Coderola. You know what I'm saying? And the one or two other people that would be there, you know, that shit, they, you know, they, they would come and go. They'd be somebody's cousin or somebody this or that, and they just would come and go, you know. So it was just us doing it. So I'm rapping with Chameleon there. We doing demo tapes, doing whatever, trying to, you know, it really just more like hobby for fun. Like I didn't take any of it serious, like thinking that it could be a career. It was just something I we love to do. We love to. We thought we could do it. We thought we were better than what we heard, 
like oh you know we were inspired by what we heard so shit let's let's do our thing me and Kamina are doing our thing shit making little demo tapes and shit when when watch when I seen Watts outside the store and when I'm putting up posters and shit for what I'm promoting, Watts dropping off CDs for what he promoting, I having to ask Watts. And I would never, and I would see, bro, I would see every day firsthand people get cut off or their number get changed to do not answer. Hmm. Cause they either ask to get on the tape or they start telling Watts what he need to do. Hey, you should do this, you should do that. Everybody don't want your advice, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I would see firsthand and I was happy I was happy passing out flyers. I don't want to get X'd out of passing out flyers. So I was real strategic and I asked Watts. I Man, I used to love cash money. I said, Watts, I got a question. I love Manny Fresh, man. All them Manny Fresh beats, he be going in. How come I don't ever hear Slim or nobody rapping on no Manny Fresh beats? And he said, well, I just let them pick. And it, they rap on what they pick. And I was like, man, can you please just slide in the Manny Fresh beat Somewhere in there, please, because I just want to hear Slim Thug rapping on the Manny Fresh beat. And he was like, well, shit, well, which one you like? And even then, like, me just suggesting that was like, I, I might have been on the verge of getting cut off. Like, if I would have had a, a whack suggestion, you know, it's Manny Fresh, so yeah, obviously that's the shit, yeah. But if I would have had a whack suggestion, that might have been the end of my Swisher House, you know, employment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit. And he said, well, which one your favorite? I said, man, I like that Cash Money as an army. And he started beatboxing the beat. And he said, well, what would you say on it? And he knew we rap. He knew me and Kameen that rap. But we ain't never asked. Because I knew you asked him to get on tape. That's it. He ain't never talking to you again. So, shit, you got you to gotta let him ask you, you know, or, or, or something. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Or hope. You know, just leave that door open. Don't, don't close it. Because as soon as you ask, the door closed. Shit, cause everybody asked. Shit, and it was just shit. It just it's it's a subconscious turn off. You know what I'm saying? They asked to be on tape. Shit, it is a turn off. So shit, when he asked, what, what, what would you say on it? Shit, I started freestyling. He took me to the switch. I said, man, bet, come on, let's go. We doing that right now. Come on. Mm. Went to the switch house later. So when shit, me and come in. Matter of fact, the first the first two I went over there and did, they ended up getting lost on the hard drive. That's when you know a lot of times the hard drives would get you know, erased or something gets spilled on it or something crash or this or that. So, you know, the shit ain't official. That's when I, you learn. It ain't no matter what you go over there and say. It ain't official till it's on the tape. When you see the track list and you see your name there, that's when it's official. Shit. So people was getting took off Donda way back in the day. <laughs> shit. So, you know, the first two flows we did didn't, didn't come out. Then the, from there, shit, the shit, you know, Commander was with me, you know, and that's when we Came out, shit, shout out to Lester Roy, Archie Lee. Those are some of our first freestyles, but shit, even then, rapping on the tape. I done seen plenty of people rap on one tape, and that's it. And they'll come back and tell the whole hood, man, I wrecked them boys, I killed them boys. So when you get on the tape, man, you got to check your attitude and your demeanor. Shit, you might have, but you got to still show respect hmm. for the Swisher House was the machine, not you. You was just like a... a you know, interchangeable piece that could come and go. The Switch House was the machine. So, shit, I, I learned that too, man. You got to show respect because boys will come. Their verse will get deleted, uh, you know, or shit, they, get, they will not get invited back. So that's how I learned, shit, hmm. when you get there, do, don't get uninvited. Shit, so. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.